Welcome everybody. What I want to do is talk with you about a little bit of functions. So today the type of functions we're going to be dealing with are functions that look like a are that are an equation. And a couple things to you know remind you about functions is a function is just a certain type of relationship. And what the type of relationship that we're going to be dealing with is a relationship between two variables. And in this case we're going to look at the relationship between y and x. Now, when dealing with a function, it's very important for us to talk about independent and dependent variables. So, in our equation, we have our x is our independent variable, meaning it doesn't depend on anything. We give it a value, and we're going to use it into the equation. However, our y is what we call our dependent value, because it's actually going to depend on the value of x. Now, so we write that, when we look at a function, we say y as a function of f. So for, a fu for an equation to be a function, what we're going to have is whatever our value of x has to uniquely give a value for y. And what we'll see is when we're going to look at some examples, if that gives us a unique solution for y or not. So let's take a look at our first equation. I have y equals x squared. Now. You can pick any value you want to. And let's just say I'll pick, um, pick uh, actually, you know what? Yeah. Let's pick the, the number 2. Well, when I pick the number 2, I get y equals 4. Now, that is a unique solution. I can put 2 in there 100 million times, and every single time, I'm always going to get out 4. So therefore, this is what we call a function. Now, a big misconception with a lot of students is they know that what if I put a negative 2 in there, I'm still going to get 4. And you say, oh, well, those are the exact same. You said, you know, x has to give a unique solution. Well, it does. Your function, y, has to be a function of x, meaning my one value of x has to give a unique solution of x, meaning as long as my one value that I plug in gives me a solution that it's unique to it, it works. Now let's take a look at when it would not work. Now, here's another big misconception we have. All right, now here I'm solving for x. Now whenever we're taking the square root in algebra, we always assume it's going to be the positive root. So here I could pick, uh, let's pick four. So I'd say, square root of 4, well, when I'm just assuming it's the positive root, the only possible answer is 2, because the square root of 4, positive square root of 4, is 2. However, if I have 2 squared, I need to solve for y. I need to solve for the one single value of y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root. And what happens in algebra is when we take the square root of a value, we need to make sure we assume the positive and the negative square root of the value. So therefore, I'm actually going to take the positive and the square root of 4. And what happens is we know that our answer is going to be 4 or, I'm sorry, not 4, 2 or negative 2. And why, do, why is it you know, 2 or negative 2? Well, because 4 can be 2 times 2, or I can do the square root of 4 is negative 2 times negative 2. So therefore, when I'm taking the square root from, you know, when I'm squaring both sides and taking the square root, I have to make sure I assume there's a positive and a negative value. So therefore, my one independent value, x, actually produces two different outputs. So therefore, this is not a function. Now, that is going to work whenever you have to take the even root. It only works for even roots. It does not work for odd roots. But whenever you have to take the even root of both sides, that's going to happen because an even root, you have to either multiply a, a odd, or I'm sorry, a negative times a negative to make it positive, or you could also multiply a positive times a positive. So therefore, there's two different answers to give you, um, to give you when you're, when you're a, a positive value for an even root. So let's go and take a look at a couple examples and see if we can determine if our equations are going to be functions. Now, to determine if equations are going to be functions, one thing we have to make sure we do is find 
our function at y as a function of x. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I want to solve for y. So here, to solve for y, the easiest solution would be to add my y to the fourth over to the other side. Therefore, I have 16x. Now let's just rewrite it here. 16x equals y to the fourth power. Now, to get rid of that fourth root, or fourth power, I need to take the fourth root. So therefore, the fourth root of 16 is 2. Fourth root of x equals y. So here, what we notice is, I'm going to take the fourth root of a number we don't know. So let's say you know, I plug in a number. Well, since it's the fourth root, I have to make sure, since I took the fourth root on both sides, I have to make sure I assume the positive and the negative. And since I'm assuming the positive and the negative, because uh, it's an even root, there, I'm going to get two, I have to look at two different answers. So therefore, this is not a function. Over here, I did not take the square root of both sides. Therefore, I can only assume the positive root. My equation is already solved for y, and I am just assuming the positive root. Therefore, this is a function. For here, I don't have my equation as y is a function of x. I've got to get my y's on one side, everything else on the other side. So I can just add the y to the other side, and I can just rewrite everything as y equals 2x minus 3. Now, without looking at the graph, what we notice, though, is every single number that I plug in for x is going to give me a unique output. Therefore, I know that this is going to be a function. And for number four, um, what we notice is, remember, when you have the absolute value of y equals x plus 2, what that's going to do is that's going to produce you, no matter what my value of x is, that's going to produce me a positive and a negative value of y. Because remember, the absolute value of y means you're positive and you're negative. So therefore, since my input is going to provide me two different um, outputs, for my y, this is not a function. The other way I could write this, guys, is if we look at it, y equals x plus 2, and y equals a negative x plus 2. So therefore, no matter what number I plug in for x, I have two different answers for my y. So therefore, it's not going to work. Um, so what I'd like to do now is take a couple examples for you. I want to write them down. I'll give, give you guys some tips. I want you to write down my examples. Try them on your own. See if you can do them. And then I'll show you the answers here in just a second. Now, for this answer, what I'd like you guys to do is write these down, see if you guys can determine if these are going to be a function or not. Okay, let's look at a couple tips that uh, I want to go through on here. Uh, remember, the main important thing is write this as y as a function of x. So make sure you solve for your value of y. Okay, solve for your value of y in each one of these functions. And then, See if your x value gives you a unique y value. OK, so let's go and take a look at these answers. Here I have y equals the absolute value of 4 minus x. Well, no matter what value I plug in for um, 4, no matter what value I plug in for x, I'm going to still get a unique y value. Therefore, this is going to be a function. Over here, for this function, what I need to do is I need, first need to put it in terms of y as a function of x. 
So I need to solve for my value. I need to solve for my y. So I'm going to subtract this term, x minus 2 squared, on both sides. Therefore, I have y squared equals the negative x minus 2 squared. Now remember, to solve for y, I need to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. And whenever we take the square root of both sides, we have to make sure we include the plus and the minus answer. Therefore, I am going to have a positive and a negative solution for my value of x. Therefore, this is not a function. And for this last one, if I solve for y, I'll subtract the x squared over. What I have is y equals a negative x squared plus 4. Now, a lot of students get mixed up, so they say, oh, you know, you have the x squared, it's not a function. Be careful, it's only when we have our y is squared and we have to take the root of our y on both sides to produce a positive and a negative result. Here, I still have, no matter what value I plug in for my x, is still going to provide me a unique y solution. And real quick, I just want to kind of prove this, you know, with why I'm going to get a unique uh, solution. If I plug in, let's plug in 4 here. Well, 4 minus 4 is 0. So therefore, y equals 0. There's no two other answers that I can get for that answer of 4. Same thing with um, uh, same thing if I picked in a you know 2, I'm going to have 4 minus 2 is going to give me 2. So therefore, y equals 2. I still have a unique answer for every x value that I pick. Um, so anyways, that's a little review of functions and how to determine if an equation is a function or not.